Okay, here we've got example 19 in the differential equations topic. We are on non-homogeneous second order linear differential equations. The title so good I had to just repeat it. There it is. Uh, we've learnt about homogeneous second order differential equations. We've just looked at the first example of a non-homogeneous. If you haven't seen example 18, go and watch it because otherwise this really won't make sense at all. So the first example in example 18 are f of x, a right-hand side uh, function, x was polynomial. Sometimes you'll find that the right-hand side is a trigonometric function. And for the moment, we're only going to consider functions that are either uh, sine x or cos x. There might be a multiple, it might be sine 2x or, or cos 3x, but it will just be sine or cos. Uh, there might be a multiplier in the front. So here we have a second type of example. We obviously can't use the polynomial template for that, we've got to come up with a new one. And this is it. Um, interestingly, even although it might just be sine or cos, uh, what we've got to do, because we're dealing with derivatives, which change from sine to cos and back again, we've got to consider a template, which is both, uh, it's a sum of both sine and cos terms. Now, just be careful here, that I've actually used here P and Q. You can use anything you like. You can use you know, the capital C, D, and stuff as we have done uh, before. Uh, but in trade, so these are the constant terms. The, the multiple in front of the X has to be consistent with whatever multiple that you've got here. So if this said 25 sine 2X, then my term would here would be Y, P equals uh, P sine 2X plus Q sine 2X. So the N is not a constant term. N matches up to the multiplier, the, the angle multiplier here, okay? So that's important to note. So let's have a look at how we might apply that. We've got example 19. Find the general solution of this second order differential equation. The first thing we're go going to do is to assume or pretend that it's homogeneous, okay? Um, I didn't write it out uh, explicitly in the previous example, but we're going to do it this time. So we're going to assume at the moment that we're dealing with this. And if we had a homogeneous differential equation like that, we could come up with the auxiliary equation. Uh, and we're going to substitute m in here. m squared plus 4m plus 4 equals 0. Now, we could do a check if we wanted to. Uh, beforehand, uh, b squared minus 4ac uh, is going to be, it's going to be 16, just jump in there, 16 minus 1 times 4, which is 0, which means that we're going to have two identical roots. So we're going to end up with a squared term here. As you can see, we can factorize that m plus 2 multiplied by m plus 2. So effectively, we're saying that m is equal to negative 2. We've only got one repeated solution, which is confirmed by the fact that our uh, discriminant here is um, 0. What does that tell us? It means that, uh, uh, of course, this is um, just a different way. We had two equal roots in the, the previous one. We've just got to keep remembering the different forms of uh, this first part of it. Because the roots are, uh, because m is the same, we don't have m1 and m2. That's the version here where we use this. We've got one exponential term. Effectively, we've got a common factor of e to the mx. And we're going to say here that not the general solution, but our complementary function is going to be y equals, well, let's write it out again over here, a plus bx times e to the mx. So we've got y equals, that's just going to be two constants, y equals a plus bx multiplied by e to the negative 2x. So that's us got our complementary function in the bag. We'll come back and pin something else onto that a little bit later. So this time we want to consider the particular integral, we need to make a template based on what we see on the right-hand side, f of x. Well, here we've got 25 sine x. It's clearly a trig term. 
So we're going to suggest uh, that for the particular integral, use. What could we use here? Well, uh, the form that I've suggested, I'm going to stick with C and D. I've, I've put P and Q in my notes, but to be honest, it makes more sense to just keep using these capital letters. We've used A and we've used B. So we've got some constant term times a multiple of uh, sine x. Again, it doesn't matter which one you put first. It's as long as you've got a sine uh, and you've got a cos it'll all work out in the end, okay? Notice that I'm using uh, the sine of 1x because in the original uh, um, f of x, it was sine of 1x, okay? So I don't need to put a multiply a multiple angle in there. We just keep it all as ones, okay? So that's my particular integral. Uh, a, a sum of sine and cos terms with these constant multipliers. And that once you've got that, we, the same process goes. That's why it's that's the only new thing, like we did in the previous example, dy by dx is a derivative of this. So sine x differentiates to cos x, so we're going to have c cos x. Cos x differentiates to negative sine x, so we're going to have minus d sine x. And we've got second derivative. At cos x differentiates to negative at sine x, so we've got negative c sine x, sine x differentiates to positive cos x, so we're still going to have that. Oops, that's going to be cos. So the, the sine and cos can flip around from line to line. It's important to remember about the signs of each one. Okay? That's the same as the previous one, and so is the rest of it, really. It's the format's always the same. We're going to substitute all of these into Equation one. Well, where is equation one? It's the very first equation up here. We're going to substitute it in there. So we've got our. Ah, let's write it down. Seems so long ago. We've got d2y by dx squared plus four dy by dx plus four equals twenty-five sin x. So that's the original equation. We're going to substitute everything that we worked out for our particular integrals. The second derivative is negative c sine x minus d cos x plus four lots of the first derivative c cos x minus d sine x plus four. Ah, oh, no, it's not plus four at all. Oh, why? Equals 25 sine x. That was my mistake. But we've still got one to substitute in, uh, which is c sine x plus d cos x. And all that is equal to 25 sine x. You need a big piece of paper uh, for these ones. Multiply out before we can tidy things up. So multiply 3 by 4, 4c four cos x minus 4d sine x plus 4c sine x plus 4d cos x equals 25 sine x. So what we can do then is we can group them into sine and cos terms. So let's take... Uh, all the sine terms, first of all. So what we've got, we've got negative c sine x and negative 4d sine x and plus 4c sine x. And on the right-hand side, we've got 25 sine x. So we can um, basically compare the coefficients. I suppose we could just do that uh, right now, okay? So I've got negative c sine x minus 4d and plus 4c all sine x is equal to 25 
sine x. In other words, I haven't even simplified this yet. 4c and negative c is 3c, so we've got 3c minus 4d is actually equal to 25. Okay? And if we compare the uh, cost terms, we can see that we've got negative d cos x plus 4c cos x plus 4d cos x. Let's do it over here. Um, we've got negative d plus 4c plus 4d cos x equals, well there isn't a cos x term on the right, so that's 0 cos x. In other words, negative d, let's simplify the left hand side. Um, what can we do there? We've got 3d plus 4c equals 0. We've got two equations with two unknowns. We've got a system of equations which we can then solve simultaneously. Are you enjoying this yet? Okay, so what have we got? We've got 3c minus 4d equals 25. We've got, three, we've got 4c plus 3d equals 0. Uh, we can do whichever way comes to mind. I'm going to multiply the first one by 3 and the second one by 4 to make our 12d. So we end up with, multiply by 3, 9c minus 12d equals 75. Multiply 3 by 4, 16c plus 12d equals 0. We can add these together. We get 25c is equal to 75. So C is going to be 3. Good news. And we can also then substitute that, if we know C equals 3, into either of the two equations that we've got. 4C plus 3D equals 0. So 12 plus 3D equals 0. 3D equals negative 12, so d is equal to negative 4. And what were c and d? c and d were the coefficients of our particular integral that we proposed back up here for a particular integral use. That's the particular integral. We've just found out that c is 3 and d is negative 4, i.e., We said that we were going to do that. So the particular integral we're going to use is 3 sine x minus 4 cos x. And if that's the particular integral, then we're ready for our general solution. Big fanfare. General solution. is, well, it's the complementary function plus the particular integral, and I keep saying that so that these words might kind of stick in your head somewhere. In other words, y equals, what was the complementary function way back up? a plus bx, remember you underlined it, a plus bx times e to the negative 2x. Whoa. Huh? lost it there. A plus bx times e to the negative 2x, that's our complementary function, plus our particular integral that we've just worked out, 3 sine x minus 4 cos x. There is the general solution to your second order non-homogeneous differential equation. Okay, have a go at doing those trig ones. There's one more example which is to do with what happens when f of x is exponential. The good news is, as you can see, the template's going to be different, but the process is still going to be the same. So it's really about knowing which of the three templates to use for your particular integral, and the rest of it has a kind of common process to it. Okay?